고객이 게임 중이어서 통화할 수 없습니다. 잠시 후 다시 걸어주세요. Alright, here we are. It is time for Koka against Nada. Who will advance directly to the round of 16 as the first seed? And who will have to still battle it out? Yeah. Look, I'm, I'm really looking forward to watching these two guys duke it out. Good old classic, Karen versus Zerg. Nada is going to be the favorite in this case. He's just, he's just too good. It's ranked sixth yeah. in overall GSL. Yeah, I give him, I give him the favorite. But you know, Koka played a very strong game last he game. He did. Thing is, Nada is not just going to do a weird three tank timing to try to kill third base that lasts, you know, five yeah. minutes. Keen was like doing a build that you do like on a ladder against a bad player. Exactly. You know what I mean? Where I'm like, well, this guy's pretty bad. He need to end this. I mean, Koka's yeah. just too good to lose to something like that. Let's see what Nada has in store, though. Uh, this game, if it's going to be a really out there wonky build like we saw him use against Alicia. Or if it's going to be pretty standard and orthodox, we're going to find out in a second here. Head to head, Koka against Nada, Zerg against Taren, here at the GSL Codex. Over here in the upper right, we have our Zerg player. Bit of an underdog here. He has a lot to prove, and a lot is on the line for him right now. He is... What is he looking at? <laughs> they have a picture of you on the ceiling. That probably. must be it. That's what I would guess. Must be it. And now... In the opposite starting location, we have our Terran player, the Renaissance nerd. He is... Now I got a haircut. He's had several haircuts in his life, Tasteless. I need to get a haircut. You do. Poor makeup ladies keep telling you cut it, man. I know, I keep forgetting. I'm busy. You should grow it out. Demon souls. All right, oh, the only man. cutting I'm doing is demon souls right now. I see. Decapitating demon nerds. Yeah. My Twitter got flooded, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> I'm a good friend. You're lucky yeah. you know me. <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> I have no argument against that. Yep. All right, so hatchery first, followed by a drone. Nada, on the other hand, is actually gassing. So he's going to go ahead and tech instead of uh, the Nada 2 barracks that we're so used to seeing from him. It's interesting to see Nada branching out more now. I yeah. guess it does make sense. When the game was first out, he wanted to have one very... Uh, what is this drone doing? Well, he wanted to have one very standard build. He's just chilling, man. I, this is a pretty big mistake by Koka. There's a drone parked he, outside. He's actually... He's clicking on it. He's actually waiting to see... He's actually just waiting to see what angle the SCV comes in from, maybe. Because I, I have see, no I, he idea. He keeps going down and clicking on it. He, he knows it's there. This is not a mistake. He's meaning to leave this drone here. My guess is he's going to see the angle it comes in from and perhaps know where his opponent is. Also, he will not allow for a bunker to go up out of range of the hatchery. He's not keeping an overlord over the hatchery that you always do this when you hatchery really first. This is really interesting. Instead, he's used that to... He's used his extra overlord that you normally keep over the hatchery to go out and look for uh, where the base is. So, very interesting play here by Nada. Yeah. I, I mean, mean, by Koka. Nada, on the other hand, going Reaper. And these are going to be six slowlings getting out for Koka. Wow. You know what? I think this was an anti nada build because Nada always goes two barracks. So I think that's exactly what this was. I he think was you're waiting exactly for an SCV, right. Yeah. And he made six lings blind to stop a double barracks because that's what you're normally going to do is have a few extra lings. Wow. So I definitely has prepared for his opponent here. No question there, Tasis. Now the Reaper is going to be on the way. And this, uh, we know it's not have been using Reapers a lot more often. Oh, I love that. That micro there, he could have kited back to make sure he wasn't hit, but he thought Coco would run, so he actually kited forward. Yeah. Killed the Zergling a little bit quicker. And now with this one Reaper on the map, it's going to be pretty difficult for the Zerg to control any of the Zelnaga Watchtowers. Mm -hmm. 
Well, it looks like Nod is probably going to go into some blue flame hellions. Uh oh. Yeah, it looks like that Zergling's going to be able to know exactly what's going on. Yep. Oh, it's Just got all the information he needed. Everything right there points towards blue flame hellion. And that is exactly what Nod is going to go for. Has the stars blue flame yet? I'm waiting to have it retract. Nope, there it is. All right. So, anyways, this has been actually a very interesting game thus far. Speed is on the way, so this Reaper uh, might not be alive for too, too much longer. Still kind of going around just searching for anything it can find. You know, I love to see Reapers in basically all matchups. They're just so great at scouting, they're very quick. They can kite and kill all early game units. Well, you know, here's the thing about the Reaper or Toast. Is if, if you look at the back of the Reaper when you zoom in, it's got a T, and that's for Tasteless. That's, <laughs> that's true. It's, it's very true, Tasteless. People don't believe me, go. Go check it out. Yeah. If that's a mistake, it's not. That's... Wow. You never really liked Reapers. I'm surprised that they would give it to T for Tasteless. Well, they're, they're trying to appeal to me. I see. I was not a big Reaper guy. I like Reapers, but I, don't, I didn't yeah, use no, it that I much it. back when I was playing Terran. Yeah. You were much more of a alien guy. Now, the uh, Zergling speed is on the way here. Uh, I, I, pardon? I, I, I'm sorry. I have to interject for one moment. Yeah, yeah. Please go ahead. Koka spreads creep around his base, which is something I never see Zergs do that you're supposed to do. These drops and stuff that we see where the queens slowly get off the creep and try to stop the drop, no. If you just put down one tumor and push it around your base real quick, it's so good, and he's doing that. It's the second time he's done it. I'm loving it. Great work. All Zergs do that. It's your homework assignment. Spread creep around your base. Now we have the Hellions moving out. And they, uh, blue they will have the blue fame. Flame, excuse me. Blue fame. Blue fame Hellions. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so... Um, oh, it's going to hunt him some Zerglings, Tasteless. It's going to BBQ some Zerglings. Try to, at least. Now, remember, these are very, very difficult uh, difficult positions for Terran at times because you're just so far away from the Zerg. Uh, it's going to be tough wow. for Terran to get the, uh, the basically, the uh, the fifth base or fourth base. Ah. And the Zerglings do get in. Once again, another blow to Nada. Yeah, nice the Zerglings scouting. won't kill much, but they have the intel now yeah. for the Zerg to respond Ooh. accordingly. Gets an SCD uh -oh. so we far. We have a drop. Nice little drop going on. Where are your units, Koka? There they are. Will he lose that queen? No, he will not. Nice pickup by Nada. Mm -hmm. Koka doing a good job of defending thus far. And if that medevac goes in, it's going to see creep on the side of the base, which is going to make drop in there a lot scarier. Yeah, he might just want to turn around. Spire is going to be made in about one second. And that's always really good. Look, if you can't kill the Zerg uh, or, um, or you know, get any queens or anything like that, just go around dropping underneath overlords. Mm -hmm. It's a very smart thing to do. Just getting rid of their vision, capping their supply momentarily. If you cap their supply perfectly, you know, it goes right down when they wanted to make some drones, bam. You've just gained a huge edge. The destructible rocks are about to be taken out. Meanwhile, more Hellions. And a medevac moving out here, and I do like this. What we're seeing right here, he's going to deny the rocks from being destroyed. Yeah, that's, that's so nice. smart. Yeah, man, he is uh, with I mean, brown piece, trying to save the rocks of the world. Yeah. That's nature right there. Rock Wars, Tasteless. You ever see that show? No, I have not. Is it good? Yeah, it's where people in boats do crazy and stupid things to help rocks. They do? No. I'm making fun of Whale Wars. But okay, I was like, really, Artosis? Like, like, this is not going to sounds like a terrible days. show. <laughs> no, Whale Wars, that, that show makes my brain hurt. Yeah, it's, it's pretty painful to watch. All right, we see this little circling attack. Oh, Not my gonna, God. Yeah. This is going to be so bad for Koka. He's already lost so much. He's yeah, trying he's to throw a few back towards the Hellion so the rest can get away. One thing and I do that has some success. One thing I do have to give him, Tasteless, he already has Bane Speed just completed. Nine meters on the way as well. Even though Zerglings aren't doing much, he's really getting... The crucial things that you know every Zerg does need. We've seen a nice lot. Time. We've seen a lot of Terrans do this more and more, and I really like it. It's uh, you know just getting this Viking out and just mo going around the map and trying to kill off as many overlords as possible for the Mutalisks hatch. It's becoming increasingly popular, as you said, and uh, even now, look at this. The Mutas have to come over here and attack. And actually, they probably shouldn't be. Those Mutas are pretty scared with their plus one already. Not a getting plus one before stim or combat shields. I love He's it. He's going to get this Overlord if he targets it down. 
Nope, looks like these Muta saved it just in time. Prefers to badly bruise a Muta. No grandma, they don't taste sweeter when they're bruised. <laughs> you ever have your grandma say that? You're like, I don't want that banana. They're like, oh, the bruises, they taste sweeter, they're better, they're the best part. No, grandma, they aren't. <laughs> it's actually just bruised and gross. It's all slimy. I can't eat a bruised banana. Not me either. I can't do it. Bruised now, bananas are only good for banana bread tastes. Yeah, of course. Now, um, this is a standard uh, push here from Nada. Oh my god, that might have been too much damage yeah. dealt there. He actually like shredded up all those units. I was expecting him to turn around there. Yeah, he wanted to snipe that medevac oh so badly, but there was a second one there, and really, this is actually everything is just falling, falling apart. Out. Yeah, well said. That's exactly what I was going to well, say. Well, he might the actually hit was just good, though. have enough mutas right there, but... Ah, go, go! This is so close with his mutas. He's really spending a lot to take care of this. Looks like well, he the will. reinforcements are on the way. And he can just he can wow. just run back and meet up again. Okay, Koga held that for now, but here's the problem: is he's actually suffered so much damage. He has three mutas. He lost too much killing that. And Jesus. one only one more muta is on the way right now. You know, it's important that he killed that off, but the price he paid it might have been too high. Nada is way ahead in supply now, 122 to 96. 73 SCVs against 56 drones. Koka has gotten his third base is up, but nothing mining. Nada sending his SCVs down. He's actually going to be mining from his third before Koka is. With more SCVs, he's also got mules. He's got better upgrades. He's got more units. He's he's just owning. Yeah, he's he's doing a great job. And you know what? I, I do like what Nada's doing here to just turn around. You already did so much damage. No doubt uh, Koka expects you to attack again. He's going to make more stuff. Koka's not remaking drones or anything else like that right now. Koka's economy is somewhat in shambles, so Nada just goes back and gets even more ahead. Well, that's what you should do, Tasis. When you're ahead, getting more ahead is yep. the best thing you can do. That's the best advice we could give you guys at home. You're like, oh, I seem to get ahead, and then, you know, I then attack, I attack and I them lose. to kill them because I'm ahead. No! Yeah, you don't have to <laughs> no. end the game. Just go back, upgrade, make more stuff. No. It's now the, your opponent's problem to figure out. Until you're Sage, you don't understand when to attack. Yeah, only Sage knows how to do that. Yeah. And Seed. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, looks like Nada's going to make somewhat of a wall in over here. Add uh, his uh, natural expansion. You know, counters are one of the only things that are going to scare Nada right now. So yeah. he's kind of preparing for that. His third base is so counterproof, he's got six turrets and a planetary up. So he is actually... So uber prepared at this moment. So uber prepared. <laughs> Quiet, yeah, Tilo. <laughs> I miss Tilo. I do too. I always miss him. Every Even day. when he's just in the hotel room across the hall because it's nighttime. Nice scan. Ooh. Good StarCraft sense there. Some more mutas are a hatching up for Koka. He does have plus one on his Zerglings and plus one on his mutas. But this, this attack that's coming across the map right now. All right, here's the counter -take. I think Nada should have actually walled himself in, like, entirely. Not quite entirely here, but he's got a lot that's going to be hard to attack into. Two bunkers. He is bringing in some Banelings. Those could end up helping out quite a bit. And a nice repair there on that one uh, bunker, but too late. And now the SVs, I think they actually can save this bunker, and this means uh -oh, that uh, Koka's yeah. going to lose this game because... Yeah, he's dead. That's He just lost that entire counter. The counter is almost dealt with. At the same time, a huge counterattack by Nada in Koka's base. Yep. Only Banelings are morphing, and he has more than enough siege tanks. Look at that. A lot of Banes, but uh, if Nada pushes just right with this, Koka's in a lot of trouble. At the same time, Nada's way ahead in spite. Here we go. Banelings, though. He's not targeting the Banelings, really, but still, enough lives. He's going to take out I all the I can't believe mutas. he actually killed that many Marines. Oh, my God. <laughs> Koka almost kills all the Marines again. He keeps doing that. Wow. Oops. Oh no, I'm dead. Just got to target down those Marines. They're too strong, though. The medevac making a fool of all these mutas. <laughs> Two one Marines and a medevac, man. Well, the problem right now is that even though Cook is barely hanging on by the by his, you know, fingertips here, it's uh, Nada who's back at home with a perfectly uh, healthy base and economy. Yeah. He's making stuff. He's not missing a beat. He's up 50 supply at the moment. Coca 
He's taken another base up at 12. Nothing's there yet. Sending his little drone centipede. Oh my god. Oops. You know, I like what Nada was trying to do there. Yeah. Nada's like, being right. cute with what he has left. He's like, I got a small army here. I'm going to park him in this little valley. Yeah, he thinks, hey, what if I can kill a few drones? Queen may as well. I have 400 APM on Nada. It's fine. And um, Zerglings, dead. Nice little play-by-play -play there by me. <laughs> Brain <laughs> killed. Muta's flying. eBay's blinking. Upgrading. Upgrades. Yes. Factories. Factory. Manufacturing. Yes. Tank. Well, Koka's just so crippled right now. Um, yeah, he's... I mean, he knows that, too. I mean, he's just like, barely trying to hang on. I think when the Thor comes in here, that's when um, it's going to be the push that Coca really yeah, can't stop because it, you're either going to spin all your bailings on the Thor or on the Marines, but either way, one's going to be left over and the Mutas are going to be picked off. He's in pretty bad shape, Tasteless. Yeah. I mean, he's, he's like a guy that fell out of his helicopter, broke his legs on the ice in the middle of a lake in the winter, and went through the ice and is now just floating there, unable to climb out. Yeah, that's that's actually a very good uh, way to describe it, Arcos. Yeah, that's, that's basically where he's at. That's basically what it is. Nice job here by Coco. Small little maneuver. Block off the landing of the command center to not allow Nada to get further ahead here. Nada, going to go ahead and remove that, though. Going to build a ton of turrets as well. I love that he just surrounds things with turrets. It's so, so smart. It's very safe, too. Stops those mutalisks dead in their tracks. Nada is actually showing... Just uh, some great play this game. I, I'm actually very impressed with this TVZ right now. This is some of the best TVZ that I've seen Nada play ever in StarCraft yeah. 2. Well, he's just being very clean and very safe. And he, that quick one bane bane he won't roll, He man. won't roll. He's, and he's going the bane slow. Lake. He's on He's on roller skates. He's trying to keep he's up. He's a rollerblading baneling. Why won't he roll? He wants to be a rollerbladeling. <laughs> And he's actually been left behind. Oh, that's why he was being pushed that whole time. Wow, that was awesome. Uh, wow, okay. Uh, <laughs> that was not supposed to happen. Well, I can't believe that he just killed that. that was the only thing about Nod is he's not splitting up his army right when he's engaging the Banelings. Even so, that was actually all the resources that he had. That was completely it for, uh... <laughs> For our poor Coca, man. I mean, Banelings can do that once or twice, but your opponent's like, well, you spent four times the amount on those Banelings than my army costs, and Nada is at 158 spike against the 116. Coca, he's just making a handful of Zerglings at the time right now. No way he's going to stop the next army. Yeah, it's 167 supply for Nada against 118 for Coca. So Coca clearly being outclassed here by a superior Terran player. There's the roller bladeling. Got a shot of him for a second. <laughs> the roller bladeling. Yeah. That is a lot of drones over there. I mean, that like is a traffic jam. Yeah, it quite is. It's a good thing there's not a blue flame helling in that line. Yeah, so. no kidding. Coca going in once again, trying to hit Nada hard before he gets more sea shanks and GG. That's a GG. Realizing he cannot do it again. You know, I, I would have expected when Koga got behind there. Good job by Nada. You renaissance nerd, you. Um, I was expecting Koga to actually just try to stay back and keep counterattacking. Yeah. Uh, but instead, he just started attacking into the guy's army. It's like, well, just wait. Just try to buy some time. <laughs> well, you know, Nada actually outplayed Koga six ways to Sunday there, Tasteless. Oh, yeah. It was totally not his game, and I'm not overly surprised. He is not a, he always makes it to at least the round of 16. Yeah. This guy's normally round of eight. You know, he, he was going to make it out of this group. He always was. He always will. Hopefully we could see Nada get to the finals Nada because I'm cases, so, yeah. I'm so surprised that then have a Nada forever. finals. Ever. Yeah. The perfect nerd. Super nerd. Renaissance nerd. Um, I really, yeah, I really thought we were going to see him, um, get to the finals before, so maybe this will be the season we'll have that. Well, with his TVZ looking like that, man, and we got to see some more of his TVT, of course, because yeah. this is going to be, I think, probably a very Terran-heavy at-the-top season. 
Just right now, it happens to be that Terrans are doing very, very well in the Korea. So yeah, on the ladder and GSL will come Code down S. To how good he is at that match? Our, our Code S is about half Terran. A little bit more. Yeah, a little bit more than like half. Sixteen total. Seventeen. Actually. Seventeen. Yeah. Excuse me. Sixteen so, is exactly half. Yes. No. Um. How I, could that be the answer? It was the only thing that couldn't be the answer. Taste. Taste. Let's drop the ball. You dropped the. Get ball, me out of man. here. Where's my suicide pill, please? You dropped where's the my, ball, but it was a bowling ball. Where's my wand of despair? <laughs> Ow! I think. Um. Hopefully, we'll have Nada uh, do a little bit better, though. Uh, yeah. Look, I think Coca's good, but he might he, still make it out. He doesn't handle uh, engagements very well. That one engagement mm. with the push. It's like he wins the fight, but just. Barely, or you he kind of have to like just run barely. some drones away and just yeah. fake at hitting it, so the Marines aren't attacking you too, too yeah. much to build up time to make more units to crush it on the outside and then crush what's on the inside. Because when you actually attack into that and they have their Marines up against the wall, the Marines on the high ground, a couple medevacs, siege shanks to stop any banelings or Marines. Ah, your muta is going to get slaughtered, which is exactly what happened. He never had a big muta count. No, he kept on. He kept on fighting like four Marines against four Mutas. Yeah, and we're, a like, medevac we're and watching, like, and we're all kind of like, we're like mm, I, I think sure. he might win that. I'm not sure. And then it's like two Marines are left, and the last Muta dies. Yep. On to our next set. It's going to be a Protoss versus Terran. Alicia against Keen. Can Alicia take Keen out on Metalopolis? My thought is yes, but Keen's a very good player, man. Yeah, he's a very good player. He didn't really show, I think, his top skill against Coca. So don't let that deter you if you're a Keen fan. Yeah, I think um, he's going to play a little bit better this time around. This is, uh, of course, a map. Well, uh, Metalopolis is a road he used to know. Yeah. It's a place he used to go to our toasts. Yeah. <laughs> he lives in that building that the, the Metalopolis map is uh, actually just on top of. All right, head-to-head. -head. Alicia against Keen. Alicia, the best Protoss versus Terran in the world. Has got to be happy going up against Keen right now, a Terran player. Can Keen engineer some kind of victory? Let's find out.